Hello everyone, a very good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all, myself Vaibhav. Today the USD GPY is having a very volatile trading session with not much directional clarity. Looking at its uh, final surge from the day's low of around 109.6 to now above 110, it does look like that if any big move is going to happen then it is more likely to happen on the bullish side during the week's remaining trading sessions. USD JPY is uh, attempting to a uh, fresh breakout above the 110 after having consolidated below this crucial level for most part of this week. If it is able to sustain this newfound bullish momentum then I think we are likely to see it climbing above 110.5 by the end of this week. On the data front, we had multiple high important economic releases for major countries around the world. I will limit myself to data which we got for the Euro area and uh, North American countries of United States and Canada. For Euro area, the preliminary estimate of inflation rate for the month of August was released. The Euro area CPI stands at 3.0% in terms of year on year for the month of August, which is considerably higher compared to the 2.2% of prior month. It will be interesting to see how the policymakers react when they meet next month for the European Central Bank's monetary policy meeting. Canada saw a decline of 0.3% in terms of quarter on quarter for the second quarter ended June 2021. This snapped the growth streak of prior three quarters. Supply chain constraints or you can say supply chain bottlenecks have contributed a great deal for below par industrial activity in last quarter. Moving to the United States, the US housing market boom continues with US house price index rising 1.6% in terms of month on month for the month of June. In, in terms of year on year, it is markedly higher by 18.8% which is also the largest increase since the record keeping began for the housing market. The conference board's US August consumer confidence declined to 113.8 from the 124 in prior month of July. Delta variant spread coupled with rising prices for goods and services is dampening the people's view of economic conditions prevalent currently in the United States. Now let's shift our gaze to the technical side. We will consider the outlook for USD JPY first and after that we will take another instrument involving USD, the gold. Let's start the session's technical segment with the USD JPY's technical outlook. This is the daily time frame chart and this daily chart was captured before this reversal happened and now if we were to look at it fresh we will have the bar in green we will have this price around 110 and you can see this congestion and make out the price moves for last couple of days in USD JPY it has been quite a range bound move and if we look at the ATR, it has nose dived below 50 pips simply because we hadn't seen big moves for last uh, couple of days and that has contributed to this uh, lower ATR. The average true range has narrowed. But now with this newfound momentum on the bullish side, I think we can expect certain things to change. And if we see the closing on the higher side, then probably tomorrow onwards, I am expecting the USD JPY to continue with uh, bullish momentum and we can expect it to climb towards this uh, immediate swing high, the resistance which is there around 110.7. So by the end of this week, the probability remains high of it climbing higher. But for that, the day's closing is going to play an important role and we will need the USD JPY to close anywhere close to or above 110 and that will solidify the bullish momentum which we are seeing in USD JPY of late. On the lower time frame charting of the pivot point series, 
we have this resistance around central pivot point and that has kept the USDJPY's upside momentum for quite a considerable amount of time. The second half of this month has been spent consolidating with the upper side being kept around this central pivot point. And when we start the trading tomorrow, we will have a fresh pivot point series formation. So that is going to provide a new opportunity for the traders to make a fresh assessment. And for that, as I said earlier also, the day's closing is going to be important. If we have the USDJPY firmly closing above the 110, then that will be a confidence booster of sort for the USDJPY bulls and we can expect this breakout to last and pull or push the USDJPY towards the levels of 110.7. If you consider the regression curve, the regression curve has been almost flat with a slight bearish bias simply because the price was not going anywhere with uh, this formation, the prior swing low formation on the lower side. And uh, more or less, it is likely to remain in this formation unless and until we have any big sustained move on the higher side. And uh, of course, you can also reverse the course and say if we get the big move on the lower side then it is likely to bend further on the lower side but the probability of that is quite low uh, looking at current price formation and uh, that is why I am more optimistic of a move on the bullish side rather than a move on the bearish side. If we want to take advantage of this move I think we will have to rely on this convergence of the three SMAs. We have this 50, 100 and 200 SMA converging just below the 110 level and this can be utilized as a critical marker for USDJPY trades. As long as price action remains above or closer to this uh, confluence area, we can be confident of profiting from the buy trade. But if we see it again breaking on the lower side and inching towards 109.8 or below that, then that will be a sign of uh, cautious for us we will have to simply sit on the sidelines and uh, wait it out for further clarity to emerge but as long as this level holds as long as we have the price action firmly above 200 sma then i think we can take our chances and uh, the entry point anywhere in the vicinity of the confluence area of these three sma can be considered a good choice while keeping the stop loss below 109.8 for uh, today's session, the trading opportunities are uh, hard to come by, but once we step into the next trading session, we will have a lot more clarity and uh, by the time we come back for trading in uh, tomorrow's trading session, we will uh, be looking for a big move on the bullish side probably and uh, for that the day's closing is going to be a lot important and I am expecting it to end the day anywhere closer to 110 and if that happens we will have this uh, consolidation phase coming to an end and a new move new big move can be expected an immediate target for intraday perspective can be kept closer to this uh, immediate swing high the friday swing high established just little below 110.3 and if you are trading with a weekly view then you can uh, enlarge your uh, gaze and keep the target price above the 110.5 and by the end of the week we are expecting the move for the USDJPY in that territory closer to the prior swing high. Now let's see what's happening in the gold. This is the daily time frame chart and again after getting closer to the prior swing high the gold has started to struggle. The day was uh, they started on the lower side closer to the levels of US dollar 1800 per ounce but it uh, gathered the bullish momentum and we saw it trying to inch higher closer to the day yesterday's high but it hasn't been able to sustain and now we are seeing renewed selling pressure pushing it lower and this time around I am expecting the gold to remain subdued and we can expect it to break below the levels of US dollar 1800 and 800 ounce. So for 
exploiting the trading opportunities trading possibilities we will have to mostly rely on the lower time frame charting where we can figure out what are the crucial levels to watch out for the important marker for any trading opportunity to be taken is uh, this central pivot point which is uh, there around just little above the levels of US dollar 1800 we have it at the precise level of US dollar 1804.30 per ounce and this has been acting as the immediate support for gold price moves for last two trading sessions and it will be interesting to see how the day closes and uh, once the new day starts we will have a new pure point formation so that is going to play an important factor when most of the traders will be making a fresh assessment in the changing circumstances if you consider the regression curve it remains firmly inclined on the higher side that means it will be better for us to look for scalping opportunities and not go for any swing trade kind of big trades in the gold as its uh, directional preference remains on the bullish side so for any trade the immediate scenario can be adjusted as a correction phase we are not really expecting any big move on the lower side as its uh, medium term outlook still remains bullish we have this formation of higher highs and higher lows and unless and until we have a new swing low below the levels of these immediate swing low established around US dollar 1780 it will uh, be difficult for the bears to take charge so for any trading opportunity I think scalping kind of technique should be or is likely to be more suited and uh, that's how we should be trading in the gold in near term for that we can utilize its immediate uh, support and resistance when we are looking to short we should be shorting it closer to the immediate swing high established around these uh, us dollar 1820 levels and if you are looking to go for a long trade then i think the immediate support zone of uh, around us dollar 1790 can be considered as uh, important price areas which we can exploit for scalping trades so my advice is short it closer to the immediate swing high so this is the price area to watch out for now the momentum seems to have shifted after it struggled closer to this uh, swing high area and it is slowly inching on the lower side so today that opportunity has been missed and now we will have to wait for it to settle on the lower side and if it uh, extends this falls fall toward the immediate swing low this support area and after due consolidation we can indeed think about going long but right now we will do well to sit on the sidelines and uh, go short on it only if it uh, climbs on the higher side and gives us opportunity closer to this uh, resistance zone which has uh, capped the gold's gain in recent trading sessions so that's my take looking at the current price formation of the gold if any of you have any query or any idea to share you can write to me in the feedback section and i would be more than happy to take the discussion forward before I sign off, I would also like to remind of the risk associated with trading the financial instrument and one should be careful while using the information provided. For further coverage of the market developments, you can check out the Ducoscopy Analytics page for starting to trade. The JForex platform is at your service. For any query or for any discussion, you can also join us on the Facebook. You can follow the Ducoscopy Bank's Facebook page. Have a profitable day ahead. See you next time. Till then, goodbye.